Mac OS 12 beta 10 is officially out and this update is by no means perfect but it does bring us an inch closer to the official release of Mac OS 12 and it has some minor important changes that the previous updates never had. Let me show you what I mean. What's up guys, welcome back to Half Man Up Tech. My name is Ben, your host. So finally, when it comes to Mac OS 12, we have the next beta update. And as you can see, it's Mac OS 12 Monterey Beta 10. I'm updating to it on my 2016 15 inch MacBook Pro. And this update comes after one week since the release of Beta 9. And being a developer beta tester, that's why I'm able to get this update today on the 13th of October. If you are waiting, for the full installer or the IPSW file then look no further than tomorrow as that's when those are expected and you can see the update size for me here that it came in at exactly 1.62 gigabytes and I was actually updating for Mac OS 12 beta 9. Now it's interesting because if you look at the time it took to download that 1.62 gigs it was pretty quick as you can see it took about 35 seconds and after downloading the preparation time is what took a bit longer so initially the update said that the preparation would take about 25 minutes but i did the calculation and i measured it and all in all the preparation took about 15 minutes so it managed to cut 10 minutes which is quite substantial now obviously this is not all that apple released today it's been a busy day from apple so if we go to the apple developer page and see some of the updates that were released you can see that today apple released mac os monterey beta 10 also apple released ios as well as ipad os 15.1 beta 4 they released watch os 8.1 beta 4 and also they released tvOS 15.1 beta 4 and if you go over onto my youtube page and you go to the community section there's some other updates that were released today that aren't listed here and you can see that also today we had audio os 5.1 beta 4 and we got mac os pixel 11.6.1 release candidate and you can see the associated build number for that now most of these updates i do cover here on the channel at half man Aftech. so if you want to keep up to date with the latest mac os updates new features new macs and information like that then a sub to the channel would be appreciated now let's go ahead and look at the software changes that came with mac os 12 beta 10 we start off by going to the about this mac section to see the build number and as you can see here you can see the build number that it's now 21a5552 and a at the end now comparing this to what we had on beta 9 the build number that we had previously on beta 9 was 21a 5543b so in a sense we took one step forward or one step in the positive direction as we went from a build number that had a b to a build number that had an a and a in terms of stability is it's up there it just goes to show that when it comes to mac os 12 we are an inch closer to the final release i'm i'm very happy for this and that's why i'm so excited and also if you go to see the mac os storage or the system storage being taken up by this update you can see it there it's nothing abnormal it's almost the same as you know what was there on beta 9 as on beta 9 it was 16.65 gigs now when it comes to some of the new features and changes that came with this update, I would like to show you the first one that I noticed here. So it has to do with universal control and with universal control, with this update or with Mac OS 12 rather, we've seen three stages of universal control. So it went from being not mentioned at all to being mentioned, but not present. So just mentioned in a code, but not at 
like foreseeable in the OS. And now with Mac OS 12 beta 10, there's actually a step further to this as you can actually see it and get a little glimpse of what it will offer. So if you go into your system preferences and then go to your display section right there, you'll be able to see that you have a section that's called advanced. And if you click on advanced, you'll be able to see universal control. And right there, you can see that we have two options that we can select and it says allow your cursor and keyboard to move between any nearby Mac or iPad. So it works between Macs and iPads and it says your cursor and keyboard can be used on any nearby Mac or iPad sign into your iCloud account. So as long as it's in the same iCloud account and also you can see the second option here that says push through the edge of the display to connect uh, to connect a nearby Mac or iPad, allow the cursor to connect to a nearby Mac or iPad by pushing against the edge of the display. So I would guess somewhere at the edge here, that's where you would have to set it up properly. But as you can see for me here on my 2016 15 inch MacBook Pro that I'm using here, this is an Intel Mac and I'm very glad that Apple decided to sort of add this feature to all the devices. Some of the features when it comes to Mac OS 12 are exclusive to Apple Silicon M1 Macs, but this one seems like it's also going to be coming to all the MacBooks like Intel Macs. So this is not yet fully functional, but at least we can see it and we can get a glimpse of what it looks. So for some people that are using different devices, they are able to actually select or check mark these two boxes that we have here. But for me, this is what I have. I can't like check mark these boxes and allow, you know, this cursor function. But for those that do have or are able to check mark this, also for them, they aren't able to go far. So it's more or less the same thing when it comes to universal control. I'd like to think when the release candidate or the official version comes out perhaps this will be something that we can actually function with or work with now when it comes to share play this is actually facetime that you are seeing right here and i've initiated a facetime call but as you can see here we do have the share play button here but just like universal control this button is by no means functional as you can see if you click on it nothing happens but also, if you go into the FaceTime here and go to your preferences, you will notice that if you go to this share play section that you are seeing right here, you actually have the ability to enable share play or disable share play when you are in applications that are like watching shows. I believe that's the Apple TV listening to music. That is the music app. And when you are using apps that allow you to be able to combine calls, and I believe here on the bottom of this screen, what you are seeing here, there should be a toggle where you can add the applications that you want to allow to use this automatic start autoplay. Like you can add your podcast if you want to share your podcast, or you can add your music app here. But as you can see here, this is a feature that is still in transition. And just like what we have with universal control, it's still a feature that's in transition. Also, when it comes to Safari, there have been minor stability improvements. Nothing changed, in my opinion, from what I saw. So the version or the build number that came with Safari has also been updated. So if you go to the about this uh, Safari version, once you open your Safari, you will see that the build number or the version we have is 15.1 and the build that's associated with what we have on Mac OS 12 beta 10 is 17. 612.2.9.1.6. So previously on beta 9, we had 15.1 and the build number was 17.612.2.9.1.1. So we sort of had a 9.11 at the end, but now you can see that we have a 9.6.1 with this new Safari build. Hopefully, it does make make it a little bit stable when it comes to like Safari tabs and also when it comes to transparency as there were issues on the previous betas when it comes to Safari. If you go to apple.com forward slash Apple events, you'll be able to see that we have an Apple event that's scheduled on the 18th of October at 
10 a.m pacific standard time and if you click on the event here you actually be able to see that you can add it to your calendar and also if we go to the calendar app you can see that the 18th is actually a monday so something that's unusual maybe it's because the google pixel event is taking place on the 19th so apple decided to just take the 18th but this is when we are expecting the apple unleashed event for new macbook pros we are expecting a new 14 inch macbook pro as well as a 16 inch macbook pro with an m1x or m2 or m2x chip we are yet to see what apple is going to refer to the chipsets that are going to be in those new devices devices and perhaps some new apple accessories or like peripheral devices like airpods and so on so that is when it's expected and speaking about the release date of mac os 12 let's take a look at this because you can see that today it's the 13th of october and now that we have mac os 12 beta 10 i believe this is the last beta that we are going to get before a release candidate so if we are to get a release candidate perhaps we might get the release candidate on the october 18th after the apple event concludes and then after that perhaps on the sometime between the 19th to the 22nd we could get the official release of mac os 12 being released to the public to all supported devices and you can enjoy most of these new features and changes that came with mac os 12 if you have supported device so i'm very excited for this and i'm going to be covering it here on the channel so if that's something that tickles your pickle then stick around and we'll walk the journey together stay safe and i will definitely see you in the next video guys cheers